Exploring the world can sometimes take unexpected turns as these tourists discovered. From cultural misunderstandings to legal misadventures, their journeys led them into trouble in foreign lands. In today's video, I'm recounting the tales of the top 15 tourists who found themselves in deep trouble. Let's start with number 15, a cha-cha on Chichen Itza. Of all Mexico's monuments, few are as iconic as Chichen Itza. It's located in southern Mexico. It was built by the Mayans and is one of the new seven wonders of the world by UNESCO. However, in September of 2022, a Spanish woman completely disrespected the monument by dancing on top of it. Since walking up its steps isn't allowed, this is a massive no-no, and in response, she was booed by an angry crowd after coming down and may face a fine of about 2,600 bucks. Number 14. Stuck in a Suggestive Spot In 2014, German university students had quite the laugh when an American exchange student got stuck in between a sculpture of a female's private parts. Located at Tübingen University, the young man was reportedly dared to climb inside the sculpture where he ultimately got stuck. It reportedly took 22 firefighters yanking him out by hand to get him out, making it a thoroughly embarrassing event. When the mayor was asked to comment on the incident, he said that, quote, even when considering the most extreme adolescent fantasies, to reward such a masterly achievement with the use of 22 firefighters almost pains my soul, end quote. Number 13, grabbing a lever. In June of 2023, a pilot narrowly avoided disaster when he prevented a woman from sending their helicopter into the depths of the Grand Canyon. Video footage shows a woman grabbing a lever of the helicopter, and in response, the pilot yanked the woman's wrist off, shouting, No, no, that will kill us! It turns out that this reaction was more than justified, because the lever controlled the rotor brake. This brake, when pulled, stops the rotor blades from spinning, which in turn would have made the helicopter plummet down into the canyon, likely leading to an untimely end for everyone. To date, the woman remains unidentified. Number 12. Bothering the King's Guard If you go to London and visit Buckingham Palace or St. James Palace, you can come face to face with one of the King's Guards. These are the men and women that wear red uniforms, the big black hats, and stand on guard in front of royal residences and offices. While normally absolutely still, if you get too close or otherwise act like a nuisance, they can do everything from punch you into the face to forcibly march into you. As such, I suggest you leave them alone and let them do their job in peace. Number 11. Defacing a Temple For most, a trip to Japan is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but for one Canadian teen, the trip became a disaster after he decided to deface an ancient temple. The 17-year-old in question was visiting Tosho Daiji Kondo, built in the 8th century. It's one of eight historic monuments of ancient Nara and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. However, that didn't stop a certain Julian from carving his name into one of the wooden pillars supporting the roof. After being brought in for questioning by the police, he was let go into the custody of his parents, although there is still a chance that he will be officially charged by a prosecutor and fined as much as $2,800. Number 10. Swimming in Venice's Canals While Venice is one of the most beautiful cities on Earth, what's not so beautiful is the water in its canals. After all, while pleasant to travel through via gondola, they're not only filled with motorboats that don't look out for swimmers, but more importantly, act as a communal septic tank. Since installing sewage pipes and conduits would require raising the entire city by half a meter, it has instead been decided that the best course of action is to dump all sewage and wastewater into Venice's canals. To make matters worse, even more pollution comes into the canals thanks to the chemical plants in the Porto Marghera industrial area and the pollution from boat traffic. And while there are some mechanisms to get rid of all the pollution, after all, some more upscale establishments will filter the water before dumping it and tides flush out most of the contaminants to see twice a day. It goes without saying that swimming around in the polluted canals is simply a bad idea. And if, for whatever reason, you decide to go for a dip, you can expect a fine of at least 375 bucks, making the whole thing just a bad idea. However, in 2019, that didn't stop two tourists from doing just that. That's because when police arrived at the canal beside the Piazza San Marco, thinking there may be people drowning, they instead found two Czech tourists skinny dipping, shouting in support of their favorite soccer team. Well, after being forced to put their clothes back on and going into the station, both men were fined approximately $3,300 for their bad behavior. Number 9. The Fallen Statue 
The Irish are known for their ability to drink, but one Irish tourist in particular had a bit too much when he drunkenly destroyed a Belgian statue. Located right outside the Brussels Stock Exchange, the statue in question features a man beside a lion, and in September of this year, the man in question thought it would be a good idea to try to ride the lion. As the video footage shows, he successfully got on top of the lion, but on the way down, he accidentally hit the torch in the man's hand, causing it to crumble down to the street below. Rather than disappear, he then stumbled into a local fast food joint, where he was promptly arrested by police. According to his account, he was unaware that he had caused any damage, however, a later tally placed the figure at a whopping $19,000. To make matters worse, it turns out that the sculpture was heritage listed, and that just one day before the entire building had finally reopened to the public following a three-year, $150 million restoration. So, as you might expect, this didn't help the man in the court of public opinion. And when asked to comment, Nell Van de Venet, who was the project manager for the restoration, said that, quote, We would like to carry out the repairs quickly, but it will surely take a few weeks or even months. The whole building has only just been restored to its former glory, including the two lions. We thought the sculptures would enjoy greater respect. We just think it's very sad that this happened. End quote. In any case, while it's unclear that he will face any criminal charges, the tourist will legally be obliged to pay for the entire restoration. Number 8. A Florentine Fountain Fiasco This past September, a 22-year-old German man made headlines after he damaged a 16th-century fountain of Neptune in Florence's Piazza della Signoria. The fountain in question features the Roman sea god Neptune atop a shell-shaped carriage pulled by horses, and one night, the German tourist in question decided to jump over the protective barrier around the monument and pose on the statue while two friends who remained on the other side of the barrier took photos. Surveillance footage shows that after climbing onto the edge of the pool, he jumped, climbed onto one of the horse's legs, and reached the base of the carriage. After getting the photos, he began his descent, but it was during this descent that he placed his foot on the horse, damaging it in the process. As soon as this happened, an alarm went off, but at this point, it was too late since the young man had managed to escape with the two others. Thankfully, video surveillance footage allowed city authorities to track him down. They then charged him under a city penal code that prohibits the destruction, dispersion, deterioration, disfigurement, or soiling of cultural or landscape assets. And if convicted, he could be banned from entering the city and will, at a minimum, be expected to pay a fine that would likely include the entirety of the $5,400 in damages. As you might expect, this event caused quite an uproar, and in response, Italian Minister of Culture Gennaro Sanguigliano had suggested that the Senate will crack down on this behavior. In a statement, he said that, quote, For too long, it's been thought that in Italy, one can act indiscriminately. The provision that tightens the sanctions for damage to cultural heritage, already voted by the Senate and which will soon become law, will be the right deterrent to similar actions, end quote. So, if and when a similar crime happens again, we expect a crackdown to be rather harsh. Moving on to number 7. Pompeii Pilfering Most people would agree that stealing items from an ancient site is an awful thing to do. After all, oftentimes these artifacts can help contextualize a given building or site, providing information to archaeologists and historians. However, it is not uncommon for people to successfully pilfer these sites. But in 2020, one tourist in particular was punished in an unusual way. While there are generally fines and even prison time associated with this type of theft, a woman from Canada named Nicole managed to steal parts of an amphora and a piece of ceramics while on a trip to Pompeii in 2005. However, in 2020, she sent both pieces back alongside a letter of repentance. In it, she blamed the artifacts for giving her bad luck. In the letter, she wrote, Please take them back, they bring bad luck, and explained that, quote, I am now 36 and had breast cancer twice, she said, the last time ending in a double mastectomy. My family and I also had financial problems. We're good people, and I don't want to pass this curse on to my family or children, end quote. Now, whether or not the artifacts were the cause of her misfortune is up for debate, but what is not debatable is the fact that she's not the first person to return artifacts to Pompeii. After all, that same package contained another confessional letter from a Canadian couple that had stolen some stones from the site in 2005. This letter said that, quote, We took them without thinking of the pain and suffering these poor souls experienced during the eruption of Vesuvius and their terrible death. We are sorry. Please forgive us for making this terrible choice. May their souls rest in peace. End quote. In fact, the return of stolen items is so common that Pompeii's officials have even made a museum that exhibits all of the reclaimed pieces. So what do you think? Were these people cursed, or was it all a big coincidence? Let me know down in the comments below. 
Number 6. Cruise Ship Plunge Cruise ships are often known for being a fun time filled with tanning, partying, and drinking. However, Nick Nadev of Washington State took the drinking a bit too far after deciding to jump off the 11th story of a Royal Caribbean cruise ship docked in the Bahamas. According to his account, he had woken up still drunk from the previous night when he decided to jump on a whim. When he jumped, all of his friends were recording him, and on the recording you can see him briefly turn back to smile at the camera before barreling off, limbs flailing, plummeting more than 30 meters into the blue water below. While the video didn't show his impact, he did survive to tell the tale, however he certainly wasn't unscathed. In the comments on his Instagram post with the caption, Full Send, he told others that while his feet were fine, his neck and tailbone hurt after the jump, and that he could barely walk for three days. To make matters worse, he and his friends were kicked off the cruise and banned from all future Royal Caribbean cruises, and may even get sued by the company. To add insult to injury, they had to purchase plane tickets home from the Bahamas. The one silver lining is that the local police found the whole thing to be quite amusing and chose not to press any criminal charges. In any case, in a statement to Fox 13 News, he said that, quote, I didn't think this through before I jumped. My idea was that this would be a good laugh for my friends and I would just swim back to shore and continue my vacation and never thought it would be this serious, end quote. It's also worth noting that the jump has seriously divided Instagram commenters, with some calling him a legend, others an idiot, and many something in between. So what do you guys think? Do you think Nadev's stunt was cool or <laughs> that it was an incredibly stupid thing? Let me know down in the comments. Number 5. Streaking Through Barcelona While Italy does receive its fair share of awful tourists, that doesn't stop some Italians from misbehaving while abroad. In 2014, three Italian men made headlines when they decided to streak across Barcelona, wearing nothing but their birthday suits. The drunk men terrorized the neighborhood for three hours, even popping into a local shop as residents and fellow tourists look on. For many in the city, this was a tipping point. For years, Barcelona's tourism industry has exploded, and nowadays it's often the case that there are more tourists in the city than actual residents. The issue is, is that many of these tourists are young partiers that are not very well behaved, and after the streaking incident, fed up residents decided to stage a protest. In one such protest, locals took to the street with a homemade map detailing the locations of apartments on rent for tourists. They then went to the owners and tried convincing them to shut down their rentals for the good of the neighborhood. Similar protests soon spread to other neighborhoods, and while police patrols and the end of the busy season turned down tensions, ever since it's not unusual to see graffiti in the city urging visitors to go home. The difficult thing about the situation is that while Barcelona's businesses do make a lot of money off these visitors, the higher rents caused thanks to living rentals becoming vacation rentals have driven up the cost of living. While the loudness of tourists who often party into the night has made some neighborhoods near unlivable. Now, that doesn't mean there's no hope. After all, there are some cities that have begun to take positive actions to address the problems of tourism. For example, Venice announced that this summer it will start charging day trippers about $5 to visit the city center. Amsterdam City Council has voted to ban cruise ships from docking near the city center. And Athens has capped the daily visitors to the Acropolis of Athens at 20,000 people per day. Yet to date, Barcelona has more or less done nothing to fix the problem, although this will hopefully change in the near future. Number 4. Insulting Thai Royalty In most parts of the world, insulting a royal family will get you a little more than some mild disapproval from monarchists. But in Thailand, doing so could land you some serious jail time. A Swiss man, Oliver Rudolf Jufer, found this out the hard way when in March of 2007 he was sentenced to 10 years in jail for doing just that. You see, unlike most of the world, Thailand has a set of super strict les majesty laws. Now, in essence, ever since 1908, it's been illegal to defame, insult, or threaten any member of the royal family. These laws are extremely controversial, as they've generally been applied with strict severity. For example, even doing something as basic as destroying Thai money, which has the king's face on it, can lead to jail time. And in many cases, these laws have been used to suppress political activity. For example, in the 1980s, Vera Muscapong was banned from politics for five years after he said in a campaign speech that he would have been happier and had an easier life as a prince than a politician. This in turn led to a six-year jail sentence, which was reduced to a few months after he received a royal pardon. In the case of Oliver Rudolf Jufer, he caught the ire of authorities when he was caught by surveillance cameras spraying black paint over five outdoor posters of the king in Chiang Mai, where he was staying as a long-term resident. 
The vandalism coincided with the monarch's 79th birthday, which made it an especially potent event. After considering all the evidence and the accused guilty plea, a judge sentenced him to 10 years in his 2006 trial, making him the first foreigner in more than a decade to be convicted under Thailand's least majesty laws. However, Jufer caught a lucky break when in 2007 he was pardoned by the king and deported back to Switzerland. Unfortunately, since then, a fair number of Thais and foreigners have been sentenced under these laws. While foreigners are generally pardoned after a few months, native Thais are not so lucky, often spending years behind bars for relatively minor crimes. As such, if you ever decide to make a trip to Thailand, I'd suggest keeping your thoughts on the Thai royal family private. Number 3. Yeltsin Visiting America when the USSR collapsed, Boris Yeltsin became the man at the helm of the fledgling new Russian Republic. He served as its president from 1991 until 99, and during his time he had a rather interesting relationship with the United States. Now, For a bit of context, he was seemingly quite close with Clinton. After all, he gave him a pair of hockey jerseys that said Yeltsin 96 and Clinton 96. And another time, Clinton doubled over with laughter when Yeltsin called the U.S. press a disaster at a press conference. However, there is a case to be made that Yeltsin was perhaps a bit too comfortable on American soil. That's because while visiting Washington in September of 94, he caused quite the embarrassment after he was found drunk in his underwear hailing a cab. The story goes that the Russian president was staying at Blair House, which is one of the U.S. government's primary guest quarters. After some late-night drinking, Yeltsin wanted a pizza, and so in his underwear decided to walk outside alone onto Pennsylvania Avenue, hail a cab, and ask to bring him to a pizza joint. When American Secret Service agents found him trying to do this, they attempted to lead him back to the Blair House, at which point Yeltsin got into a loud, drunken argument with the agents. While it's unclear exactly what happened after that, when asked about the incident, Bill Clinton shrugged and said, quote, Well, he got his pizza, end quote. Yet that wasn't the end for Yeltsin, because the very next night, he tried to do it again. In an attempt to elude security, he made his way down the back stairs into the Blair House basement. However, as he did so, a building guard mistook him for a drunken intruder. Chaos ensued, and it was only after both Russian and American agents arrived on the scene that the entire situation was sorted out. In any case, these two situations and many others were symptomatic of Yeltsin's wider problem with alcoholism, which only became worse as his time wore on in office. By the time his term was over, he had engaged in many other international faux pas, which included an incident where he couldn't be roused for an official visit after his plane landed in Ireland, and another where he fell down the stairs from the plane and then conducted the greeting orchestra in German. As such, many would agree that Yeltsin may just be one of the worst tourists and most embarrassing world leaders of all time. Number 2. Carving into the Colosseum Now, if you've been to Rome, then you know that the Colosseum is simply breathtaking. While it was an incredible sporting arena during its day, it now serves as a massive, nearly 2,000-year-old monument to the glory of ancient Rome. However, this didn't stop 27-year-old fitness instructor Ivan Dmitriev of Bristol, England from making his own personal mark on the priceless archaeological site. That's because in late June of 2023, he made the brilliant decision to carve the name Ivan plus Haley 23 into the wall of the monument with a key as onlookers actively filmed him, not stopping even after people called him an asshole. The video entitled, Asshole Tourist Carves His Name in Colosseum in Rome, was uploaded onto YouTube and shared across social media. This was then used by the Italian police who, after a five-day search, traced Dmitriev's whereabouts to England. He's now being investigated for damaging a cultural heritage asset, and if convicted, faces a fine of between $2,700 and $16,000, alongside a prison sentence of two to five years. His girlfriend, Haley, is not under investigation, although she could be considered an accessory to the crime. However, given the gravity of the situation and the public uproar it caused, it's quite likely that even if Haley isn't charged, Dmitriev will have the proverbial book thrown at him. In response to the allegations, Dmitriev put out a statement saying that, quote, I'm aware of the gravity of the committed gesture, and I desire through the lines to address my heartfelt and honest apologies to the Italians and to the whole world for the damage caused to an asset which, in fact, is the heritage of all humanity, end quote. He then praised those who, quote, guard the inestimable historical and artistical value of the Colosseum with dedication, care, and sacrifice. 
before adding, it is with deep embarrassment that only after what regrettably happened, I did learn of the antiquity of the monument, end quote. Dmitriev's lawyer made his own statement asserting that, quote, the boy is the prototype of the foreigner who frivolously believes that anything is allowed in Italy, even the type of act which in their own countries would be severely punished. I consider it essential to make our client understand the moral value of a letter of apology to our national community and civil institutions. On this basis, we hope to come to an agreement with Prosecutor Nicola Mariana for an application of a legally consistent and just sentence." End quote. So as you might imagine, the Italian press didn't have much sympathy for Dmitriev, rightly doubting that Dmitriev didn't know what the Colosseum was and expressing frustration that a city like Rome already had enough problems and didn't need those caused by tourists like Dmitriev. However, only time will tell whether or not a judge will have similar sentiments. Number 1. Rowdy Russell Brown in Canada, the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land, and it hears about 100 of the country's most important cases every year. However, in January of 2023, Justice Russell Brown caused quite the stir when he made a public embarrassment of himself at a resort in the state of Arizona in the U.S. While the story is not 100% clear, both sides have made reports on the subject to the media. According to Justice Brown's statement, quote, on the evening of January 28, 2023, I was in Arizona to participate in an awards banquet at a local resort. Following the event, I joined other attendees at the resort lounge. In the course of the evening, a group at a nearby table invited me to join them. We all left the lounge roughly on the same time. Outside the lounge, Mr. Crump objected to me rejoining the group and suddenly, without warning or provocation, punched me several times in the head. Taken by surprise, I was unable to defend myself." End quote. However, Mr. Crump told a very different story. Crump, who's a 31-year-old U.S. Marine Corps veteran turned mortgage advisor, said that Justice Brown was in the resort bar when he and his friends arrived at about 11 p.m. after a baby shower. At some point, Crump briefly left the table, and those remaining invited the judge to join them. This annoyed Crump when he returned, as he said that at this point Justice Brown began to boast about his importance and began to read from his speech. When the group left, Justice Brown reportedly followed them back to their room. At this point, Crump confronted the justice, saying that, quote, You're clearly intoxicated and the girls are creeped out by you. He shoved me, I pushed him back, then punched him in the face twice and he fell to the ground. End quote. In any case, this drunken brawl forced Justice Brown to miss about four months of duty at the Supreme Court, and over this time period, many important decisions were made without him. It was also during this time period that more info was gathered on the incident. This included a report from Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Arizona, who said that the evidence seems to vindicate Justice Brown and lawyer's statement that notes that Crump's two female companions made public social media posts about the encounter, which apparently showed that they found the incident humorous and used it to benefit financially. In any case, in the light of the fact that the investigation may go on until 2024, and in the light of the public embarrassment it caused, Justice Brown ultimately decided to retire from the court, leaving room for...